Great, thank you very much. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know it's You've been using this one, right? So right. Probably okay. we can stay with this one. I hope people can hear me. So what I want to do today is to finish this proof of Iwasawa's theorem about... But remember, I want to prove what I call theorem A. So let me remind you what that is. And um, so now we, we have, again, the base field F is an arbitrary finite extension of Q. And now I, I can take any ZP extension F infinity over F. Theorem A, we will prove for an arbitrary ZP extension. In no way do we need its cyclotomic one. <coughs> and the usual notation gamma is the Galois group of F infinity over F, and Fn will be the nth layer, and so on. And as in the past, A n prime will be the p primary subgroup of the prime I n prime mod p n prime. The prime indicates that always we throw away all the ideals dividing p, whether they're ramified or not. Because that, it, it needn't be in this extension that every prime above p is totally ramified. I don't need that assumption at all. So now, I have these an primes for every level of the ZP extension, and you have, when n is less than or equal to m, we have these two very basic maps, namely there's the map INM, which sends an prime to an prime, um, and which of course, as I remarked yesterday, is, is certainly not always injective in general. And then there is the map, the norm map going the other way, norm of mn from an prime to an prime. In fact, of course, it is subjective once you, once there is a totally ramified prime. We'll, we'll be analysing that more fully later. So now what you can do, you see, is you can take with the maps Rn, you can take the inductive limit of the An primes, and this is, gives you the map A infinity prime, this gives you the module A infinity prime, which is a discrete gamma module that I've been talking about in the past. And then the other way, with the other ones, we can take the projective limit with respect to the norm maps, and that way I will get a compact gamma module, which I will call uh, W infinity prime. And now what, so curiously, well, what we want to do CMA was actually, in the cyclotomic case, it was that the homomorphisms of A infinity prime into mu P infinity is a torsion lambda gamma module. That was the exact statement of theorem A. But as usual, the, this, the fact that you have mu P infinity there, this twisting by roots of unity, that in fact, uh, if I write now Z infinity prime for the homomorphisms of A infinity prime into Q P mod Z P, then, th then this, this Z infinity prime will just be the homs it will just be this Z infinity twisted by the tape module. Because, again, uh, that if you have a finitely generated, it's a purely algebraic remark, finitely generated uh, lambda gamma module, which is lambda gamma torsion, if and only if it's twist, any tape twist of it is also lambda gamma torsion. It's just a, a simple exercise. So it suffices, in fact, to prove. What, so what we want to prove is that this module here, Z infinity prime, is, yes, Z infinity prime 
is lambda gamma torsion. Now the curious fact is that it doesn't seem easy to prove that directly just working with ideal classes. I mean, the reason for that is that, that um, in fact, the co-kernel of the map from A n prime to A n prime fixed by the Galois group, that is, is not very easy to control. So I don't think that, um, that one can, in general, because remember we're working in complete generality here, one can hope to prove that, that this module Z infinity prime is lambda gamma torsion in a direct way by just looking at its gamma co-invariance, of course, which would, gamma n co-invariance, which would be the Holmes of the A infinity prime gamma n's into QP mod ZP. So that, that to do, so that to carry out the argument, which is the strategy Iwasawa uses, we have to take a different approach. And the approach is to use this other module, W infinity prime, which is the projective limit of the AN primes. And it's by, by studying this module and, and eventually the connection between the two that we can prove the theorem. So the reason why we can carry out this argument is that, so that's the, uh, now so the argument now breaks up into two parts that um, firstly we're going to show that W infinity prime is a finitely generated torsion lambda gamma module and the second part is that we're going to explain and, and it will turn out to be it's quite elaborate uh, quite an elaborate bit of algebra but we will ch show that in fact there is a simple relationship between w infinity prime and this hom a infinity prime qp mod zp the z infinity prime and uh, so there are two separate parts now to the to the argument that follows So the, the way to study uh, W infinity prime, of course, is to interpret it as a Galois group. And then argue a little in the spirit we all began to argue for the, the extension M infinity over F infinity. So now the relevant extension I want to take is the, the field L infinity prime <coughs> over F infinity and uh, <coughs> by definition, it's the maximal Arbelian P extension of maximal unramified Arbelian P extension of F infinity, in which every prime of F infinity about B splits completely. The, the, the fact that we're working all the time with these prime things means we always have to have the split completely condition involved. In fact, in Iwasawa's paper, he also carries out the same entirely analogous argument where you, you work with, you drop the split completely conditions. It's the same arguments work in both cases. <coughs> so now, um, let's look at the n layer f of n. It will also have an analog, it will have the field ln prime, which is by definition the maximal ar unramified Arbelian p extension of fn, in which every prime above p splits completely. And of course, by class field theory, the Galois group of ln prime over fn is isomorphic to a n prime. So uh, I claim, in fact, that my W infinity prime, 
right? The projective limit of the AN primes is indeed the Galois group of L infinity prime over F infinity. This translates this module then, therefore, as a, as a Galois group. And um, well, what is obvious is that the L infinity prime must be the union of all the LN primes, right? Because obviously every LN prime, when you translate it up to, to F infinity, will be contained in L infinity prime. And of course, any element of L infinity prime will actually be defined over some finite extension. It was defined over F infinity, a priori, but there's only a finite number of of coefficients in its polynomial, so it will be coming over Ln prime. And of course, the item map tells us that An, by class field theory, An prime is always the Galois group of Ln prime over Fn. And let's just recall what happens, you see, when we vary N by class field theory. So let's take the situation now. We, we know, of course, that because the empty flow subgroups of gamma are isomorphic to ZP, the, and the only primes that can ramify are some uh, primes of IDP, perhaps not all of them, that there will be some integer n naught such that from that point onwards, uh, every prime which ramifies in the extension will be totally ramified. So that's what the, the integer n naught in all that follows will be. Um, that all ramifi are totally ramified in F. And so if I take any m greater than or equal to n and greater than or equal to naught, then obviously the intersection of ln prime and fm, because fm over fn is totally ramified, that that, that must be fn. And so the Galois group of ln prime fm over fn will be the same as the Galois group of L prime, ln prime over fn. And by class field theory, right, the, the basic properties of the Artin map, we therefore have the, 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 the norm map here will correspond to, to the restriction map here. And so to, to get the, the, the final result, we just pass to the projective limit for overall, um, overall n. All m greater than or equal to n naught. So we, we now have to, so to actually if we're going to prove the, the first part now, we can forget about uh, we, we've just got to show that this Galois group of L infinity prime over F infinity is a finitely generated torsion lambda gamma module. That's what we have to show. Now, we argue as before because you see the field, we, 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 can be, we have to see it, we have to study quotients of the Galois group of L in prime over L infinity prime over F infinity. And so we, we, we now look at, we define script L n prime. So notice here it's a curly L n prime. It's not the Latin L n prime. It's by definition the maximal Arbenian extension of F n in L infinity prime. Now, the, the crucial thing to remember is that this curly Ln prime cannot be equal to Latin Ln prime. It certainly contains it, that's obvious, but it can't be because the curly Ln prime contains F infinity. I mean, it's infinite. Ln prime obviously contains F infinity, and so they're, they're certainly not equal. And, um, I mean, in, in fact, it's even not true in general that ln prime is, is ln prime f infinity. <coughs> so we have to analyze more carefully 
what is going on here and um, let's recall that W infinity by definition of the curly LN prime of course it's the ma maximal abelian P extension of FN contained in, in L infinity prime so this Galois group of Ln prime over f infinity just by the very definition will be the gamma n co-invariance of w infinity prime. <coughs> so the, the whole point of the argument now, we want to try it, remember from the structure theory we're interested in the behavior of the zp rank of w infinity gamma n co prime gamma n co invariance as n gets large, n goes to infinity. So we might as well assume that we're in the situation where n is greater than or equal to n naught, which is what I'm going to assume now. And you see from n naught onwards there is a fixed number of primes ramified. Right, because they're all totally ramified up from then on. And so I'm going to write S for this fixed number. S is the set of prime, the number of primes of uh, which ramify in this extension. And let's note that in of course in Ln prime over F in, Fn infinity, all primes above P split completely. So in other words, we know the total ramification. This is the whole observation to make. <coughs> we can work out the, the ramification of... So let's write, let, let's spell it out further. W1 through Ws will be that those primes of Fn which ramify in Ln prime. And you see because these these primes must be are totally ramified in F infinity and then they split completely even, they're unramified after that. And the Galois group of F infinity over um, Fn is isomorphic to Zp. This means if I write T1 through Ts, capital T1 through Ts for the inertial subgroups of these primes in the Galois group of Ln prime over Fn, then in fact the Ti for every i must be uh, isomorphic to gamma n, which is isomorphic to Zp. Remember we have this, this picture here like this. And so, and remember, Ln prime essentially by definition is the maximal unramified extension of Fn which is contained in curly Ln prime. Just essentially by definition. And therefore it has to be the fixed field of the the subgroup generated by all these inertia groups. So, in other words, that tells us that that the um, that the Galois group of LN, curly Ln prime over Ln prime must be this subgroup generated. This is an all an abelian situation. T one, two, three to T S, and of course. The, we don't know whether the, these inertial subgroups are independent or not, but what is obvious, since there are just S of them, is that follows, therefore, that the ZP rank of the Galois group of curly Ln prime over Ln prime is at most S. But since the Galois group of Latin Ln prime over Fn prime is finite, this tells me, in fact, that the ZP rank of the Galois group of Ln prime over Fn is at most S. And then since the Galois group of F infinity over Fn has Zp rank 1, we conclude 
that for all n greater than or equal to n naught, the ZP rank of the Galois group of ln prime over f infinity is at most s minus 1. So what we've actually proven by this is that for all n greater than or equal to n naught, the ZP rank, because remember this, this Galois group here is, is, is by the definition of the gamma action, is in fact the same as W infinity prime gamma n coinvariance. So we've actually shown that this ZP rank is at most S minus 1 for all n greater than or equal to n naught. And of course, each of these gamma n coinvariances in any case of finitely generated ZP module. So, the, so there's no question of the W infinity prime not being a finitely generated lambda gamma module. And so by the structure theory, we immediately get the corollary that it is a torsion lambda gamma module. So this is the, the proof of the first part um, of, of the proving the whole theorem. Now for the second part We, the situation is a little more intricate, but I want to try and explain the details. So I have to, somehow we have to work out a relation between W infinity prime, which is this Galois group, as a lambda gamma module, and Z infinity prime, which is just this Pontryagin dual of the Holmes of the inductive limit into QP mod ZP. And I, I have to have a work out a relationship that will enable me to deduce from the fact that, that W infinity prime is lambda gamma torsion that the same will be true for Z infinity prime. So let's bear in mind the following, and it's rather intricate this part, I, I hope to try and at least explain some of the essential ideas, um, that of course for n greater than or equal to n naught, the extension f, in, oops, f infinity over fn is totally ramified. Right? There's at least one prime which is totally ramified. So that means, and this is a, a ln prime over fn, everything is, is even, it's unramified, and the, in fact the primes of our p are splitting completely. So when I translate that up here, this Galois group here will be the same as that Galois group there, obviously. So this, this means that a n prime, which is what this Galois group here is isomorphic to by class field theory, can, is, is canonically isomorphic to the Galois group of f infinity l n prime over f infinity for all n greater than or equal to n naught. So now the the because of this fact that all these nice things are only happening for n at least n naught, then you have to, we, we want to now introduce a certain submodule of the Galois group. So um, I'm going to define V infinity prime. I'm sorry, I'm just running out of letters to call these things, but it will be the Galois group of L infinity prime over 
and now this is this is an f infinity here but i translate f i take the compositum of f infinity in l naught prime ln naught prime so remember ln naught prime over fn over f infinity is a finite extension so this is just a fine a submodule of finite index in in the whole galois group that we're interested in it's a submodule of finite index in W infinity prime. Now, I let, it's convenient at this point when I have to talk about the relationship between the various modules that to think of lambda gamma as the formal power series ring, ZP double brackets T. We've seen this many times. This is pick any isomorphisms which maps a topological generator gamma to 1 plus t. And then I'm going to write, following Iwasawa, w omega n, this is, I guess, is 1 plus t to the p to the n minus 1, which is the same, of course, under this isomorphism as gamma to the p to the n minus 1. And since gamma to the p to the n generates gamma n, this tells me that in fact for any module M the M the gamma N coinvariance is nothing other than M over omega N M. And it's also obvious that if N is greater than or equal to N naught, then omega N naught divides omega N. And so I'm, and this the ratio I'm going to write following again Iwasawa mu n naught n. So now, uh, I'm sorry, this argument's a little bit intricate. I, at least I want to point out the essential things. The, the sort of crucial lemma is that for n greater than or equal to For n greater than or equal to n naught, I'm mm, I'm suddenly worried myself. I think this should be. Well, I'm sorry, I, there is some point, I, I mean, I claim here in this lemma that ln prime is ln prime f infinity, which would imply, now I think, I'm certainly bothered about why that is true. Um, but in any case, well, let me, let me go on. Um, let, what what is, is certainly true is that the Galois group of L infinity prime over L n prime F infinity should be the mu n naught n V infinity prime. Remember V infinity prime is this sub 
subgroup here. I think I've got the one of these Galois groups. I should. This is not quite correct, I think. But but this statement here is certainly correct. That the uh, the Galois group of L infinity prime over L n prime f infinity is the mu n naught over n v infinity prime. So therefore, the, the, so I'm afraid we should just accept that. It's, uh, I've just forgotten. I think there's something not quite right in my statement of the lemma there. But in any case, this will tell us that a n prime, you see, we, we know that um, I mean, it's certainly true then that a n, a n prime is W infinity prime is this quotient here of by mu n naught n V infinity prime. I mean, somehow the point here is that in the V infinity prime you absorb all the extraneous zeros that could be coming in, but I'm afraid I'm, I've been sloppy about the, the details here. And... And in fact, the, but 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 this statement is correct. In fact, there's a n prime over w infinity prime mu n naught. And moreover, what happens as you vary the n? So uh, if n is less than or equal to m, then you get. So you have the inclusion map a n prime to a m prime. And on the other hand, the, over here on this side, the, the way in which you go up from this quotient to this quotient, because this is a multiple of that, is you have to multiply by mu n n. So this is the integral part, I'm sorry, um, that I about the details here, but this is the intricate part of Iwasawa's argument. And um, therefore, it follows. Now, let me. So, th if this diagram is certainly correct, and it follows, therefore, that a infinity prime, which is the inductive limit of the a n primes, will be this induct this curious inductive limit here of w infinity prime over mu n naught n v infinity prime. You just take the inductive limit of those. But let's remember, so remember here, it's W infinity prime, which is the whole Galois group, and V infinity prime is this subgroup of finite index. And now it's, it's obvious, it's a general algebraic fact, that because the index is finite, this, this inductive limit here is the same as the one in which if you took V infinity prime, over mu n naught n v infinity prime. And so what the conclusion, so therefore we've, we've shown that a infinity prime is given by this inductive limit. And therefore it follows that z infinity prime, which is the the, the Pontryagin dual, it will Pontryagin dual will change the limit the other way, and so we get that it's the projective limit of the v infinity prime over, say, pi n v infinity prime q p mod z p, where pi n is the mu of. Well, I've just changed the notation, but n naught to n naught plus n now to, to have it for all n greater than or equal to naught. So this is, this is this rather strange relation between Z infinity prime and V infinity prime. They're both compact lambda gamma modules. And I mean, it's, I'm sorry, I, I'm sloppy about some of the details in the middle, but this is what Iwasawa shows. And um, we have to conclude what we know, of course, is that 
the W infinity prime, we've proven that that is a torsion lambda gamma module, and so we want to conclude somehow, and therefore the V infinity prime is, it being a submodule of finite index, so we, we simply want to conclude from this something about Z infinity prime. But on the face of it, it looks like nothing on Earth, right? I mean, you, you carry out this strange algebraic construction, you end up with this strange limit. So here's where the, the idea of adjoints come in. That remember, well, I'll, I've, okay, let me say it here, that if I now, so now it's some pure algebra to finish the proof. And the pure algebra is as follows. So let's let X be any finitely generated torsion lambda gamma module. And let's assume that X over pi n X is finite for all n greater than or equal to naught, which certainly was what we had here because it was the a n primes where pi n is given by these new n naught, n naught plus n's. And then you can look at this, this strange limit of the Holmes x pi n x into q p mod z p, this, this projective limit, and what is true is that that is the adjoint of x. This is pure algebra. Now, as I, as I was briefly explained earlier in my lectures, the, the adjoint, the conceptual way to, to define it is to say that it's the x. Right, the x1 of lambda gamma, x lambda gamma. And it's in no way obvious that this conceptual thing here, which is the one um, I gave you, is the same as this description here. But in fact, it's true. And um, someone pointed out to me after my, it was, as I say, it's in this early work of, of certainly Bio and Peramu. Peramu's work is published. But there's a good discussion of this, I gather, also in the book. Uh, Gal Galway Cohology of Number Fields by Neukirch and Winkberg and so on. So, so there is a, if people are interested in the details, you can, you can certainly, um, you can find them in, in, in the readily available literature. Uh, but Iwasawa himself in his paper, he, he just defined the adjoint this way. And I mean, the remarkable thing about the adjoint is that the adjoint, of course, of a finitely generated torsion lambda gamma module is another finitely generated torsion lambda gamma module. So uh, that's the first thing we conclude now. Finally, we have shown, therefore, that, that, that uh, Z infinity prime is a finitely generated torsion lambda gamma module. But also the beautiful thing about the adjoint is that it, it uh, which is pseudo-isomorphic, of course, I forgot to say it here, it's, it's pseudo-isomorphic to X itself, but it has this nice property that it has no non-zero finite submodule. And that, that is, is uh, so that therefore we conclude that this always, for any ZP extension, this homomorphism of A infinity prime into QP mod ZP has no finite non-zero gamma submodules. And so that finishes the proof of theorem uh, A and the proof of Iwasawa's theorem. And what, since I've got a few minutes left, why don't I just now let me put this. No. 12 and 11. So now if we go back to our cyclotomic ZP extension, F infinity. 
and then we had n infinity prime here and then down to f we saw from our argument in the previous lecture that, that uh, we determined that this is a, in fact, a, a, that this Galois group has no, so the Galois group of m infinity prime over f, uh, sorry, excuse me, this is nonsense. This is m infinity here, and here we have f infinity has no zp torsion that's one thing that emerged from Iwasawa's proof in that case and in this case we have shown that there is no non-zero finite lambda gamma submodule. So the two facts together imply, of course, that the Galois group of m infinity over f infinity has no non-zero non-zero finite lambda gamma submodule because if there was one its intersection with this subgroup would have to be zero and therefore would have to inject into the quotient and therefore it would be torsion in the quotient so this is a very nice property that Iwasawa points out of the Galois group of m infinity over f infinity. And um, by the way, this is not true at all for the Galois group, say, of l infinity prime. This is a very special property of modules. It's not true at all for the Galois group of l infinity prime over f infinity. There, there really are, in some cases, finite submodules. But as I say, as I mentioned earlier, uh, nevertheless, the, the, so this, this tells us, of course, now where are we? This tells us that we have a nice exact sequence, naught goes to x of f infinity, which is this Galois group of m infinity over f infinity. It goes into lambda to the R2, uh, sorry, to the degree of F over Q divided by 2. This map's injective now because there is no non-zero finite submodule. And nevertheless, it's not always free. There is this co-kernel here, which is finite. D is finite. And D is sometimes non-zero, and it's a very subtle invariant, which, as I say, also turns up naturally if you look into the K theory of, this, of these number fields after tau. Okay, well, I'm, I'm I'm afraid I'm finishing fairly early. Um, that. As I say, we don't, I mean, this whole theory is so striking that, that we can't prove this for another, the, the, the uh, fact that, that the, the boundedness of the Leopold de defect at the moment for any other um, non-cyclotomic ZP extension of F is a, is a sort of humbling thing that that, um, that you would think that that because the Iwasawa had this beautiful group in this case, there would be others. But even the, the very simple cases. Well, sorry, the simplest animal. I shouldn't say simple cases. We don't know how through it. But if if you take an imaginary quadratic field and a prime which splits in that field. 
that class field theory tells you there's a unique ZD extension of the imaginary quadratic field, which is unramified outside Gothic. Take one of the factors, say Gothic P, and then you can translate that over any finite extension of the imaginary quadratic field. So this is an this is an extension now over. Right, you have a a k and a k infinity, a zp extension, and you go to an f and an f infinity here. So just by translating this up, and this is a zp extension which has a lot in 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 common with the cyclotomic zp extension. For example, in this extension, there are only finitely many primes of each rational prime. Of course, this is not true for an arbitrary ZP extension. You can have prime splitting completely and so on. So this is the, uh, would be the, the obvious case to try and tackle um, the analog of the weak Leopold conjecture. And one can get evidence for it, proven in a few very special cases and so on. But, uh, the general proof is completely lacking, and uh, it would be very interesting to do it. So, I hope, I mean, I've just attempted in these lectures to try and explain a little of this beautiful paper of Iwasawa's. By the way, the, perhaps I should say, the, the, the whole latter paper, part of that paper, he is attempting to, he, he constructs an analog of the uh, the Riemann bilinear form on toruses, and um, so far no one. And the trouble is that we don't know so far any. He, he constructs it on a on a space and and three uh, ZP module, QP module, but we don't know so far any example where that space is non-zero. It may well be that there are examples. We don't know any examples. But the fact that he was able to a long time to beautifully construct this bilinear form and, and uh, show it has all the properties that you'd expect the analog of the Riemann form certainly makes one think that he felt that there should be interesting applications. But uh, no one has found any yet. So maybe someone will. I hope so. Any questions? Uh, I was just wondering in that sequence, so this is the Gawa group with the maximal unramified abelian pro unramified outside P abelian pro P extension, right? Yeah. So should, why should it inject? Are you making any assumptions? I mean, why should it inject into the reflexive? No, because I just proved it had no finite. Yeah, but you could have a torsion and stuff on it, right? Oh, uh, yeah, you are so absolutely right. Well, wrong, yeah. I should say this is x over its torsion sub mod. Excuse me, yeah. I'm just wrong. I was absolutely right. xf infinity divided by its torsion lambda sub module. Thank you, Romeo. Yeah. I'm not thinking, of course, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the torsion part is, is of course, very interesting because that is, is related to the non-forgetting in many cases. Yeah. Other questions? Uh, but just before, why was the fixed field of um, L infinity prime uh, under gamma n the same as L uh, curly L n prime. No no, 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 no. This is yeah. I mean, I, I'm uh, you see. I must confess when I was taking the notes, I. I mean, it's. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, it, it is, uh, you see it's, no, no, I should, I'm sorry, I should console you with Sarah's paper. To, he do, you see, he doesn't prove this statement, I have to confess, in his, his paper, because he just refers back to one of his earlier ones. And, um, but it's certainly true what I'm claiming here. I think there's no doubt about that, that the Galois group U, N, naught, N, V, I mean, this is what he is. He asserts in the paper so that um, Look, I'm sorry, I better dig that. I better, I'll have to dig it out of this paper to, 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 to be sure of that point. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe um, some of you will go on the right and your vision there. But let's, uh, at the same time, let's again.